Okay, in this video, I'm going to walk through making a uh, mojo or medicine bag. And um, both the mojo and the medicine bag um, have spiritual significance. Um, the mojo bag is of African descent and the medicine bag is of Native American origin. And essentially they're basically like al amulets or a talisman and it's to bring one's wearer good luck, good fortune, to protection. Um, and the medicine bag is usually, the mojo bag is usually filled with uh, items that are uh, powerful or sacred to the wearer. The mojo bag specifically may be um, made uh, and filled with items for a specific thing uh, like more wealth or love to bring love um, or protection whereas a medicine bag is tends to um, be made to protect and, uh, and or enhance uh, whatever positive attributes um, that the wearer may have so uh, I don't want to go too much into it the more in-depth in-depth description is at my website theurbanabo.com and also with uh, cited links if you want to learn about uh, get more um, you know more solid information than what I'm ever what I'm than I'm what I'm able to utter right now um, I'm kind of, kind of talking in hushed tones because it's early in the morning and people are still asleep so um, this is um, a bag that I wear and I have worn for a while as you can tell it's made of buckskin uh, mojo bags conversely are generally made out of uh, flannel uh, and are of different colors um, <clears throat> uh, some uh, uh, African uh, peoples will actually use animal skins as well so this is made of buckskin so this is not delineating too far from the mojo bag um, and they're generally mojo bags are generally just bags that you wear in, in your pocket whereas a medicine bag is something which you wear around your neck generally uh, and this um, they, the mojo bag doesn't usually have a fringe uh, but these are meant for me to be more like an, an amulet or a um, talisman, if anything. So uh, on this one here, uh, it's made of buckskin, and I've got um, I've tied on a a, a napped piece of, of glass here, and I've attached it to the front as kind of an ornamentation. And then, as you can see, I have bones. And these are just wing bones. Um, these are chicken wing bones, really. Uh, and you know, for for pipe bones, generally, they are, traditionally they would be um, the very center piece of, I believe, abalone shell, I believe, um, which is hollow, but it's really nice and pretty and shiny and much harder than than the chicken bones. Um, but very difficult to get a hold to actual pieces nowadays. So those are really powerful and, and are really good. So, um, and then I've just had some plastic beads on here. They could be bone beads. Um, they could be dyed, um, uh, not, they could be dyed pieces of wood, uh, as well. So this is just an additional embellishment to this, um, to uh, my medicine bag. And then I've got the fringe here that I like to twist. And this is what I've done on this one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through, um, at least this particular style uh, many different variations of this and um, you do your own research and again these are generally there's their spiritual um, items from different people's culture so uh, I think it's important to be respectful and do um, their due diligence to do enough research and study to know what it is you're doing as opposed to just um, you know just wearing it because it's supposed to be cool or hip or, or trendy so with that being said Let's um, go ahead and, and make a mojo or medicine bag out of buckskin. One side note is um, the pattern for these will be um, downloadable uh, off of my um, website, theurbanabble.com. All right, to uh, begin with, uh, here's the materials and the tools that we're gonna need. Um, here's the, uh, a pet, the pattern, and I actually did this on cardboard. Uh, cardboard is another material I like to use for patterns, especially to keep them around. They, they, it's more durable and they last longer. It's kind of a pain to cut out, is all. Um, there's the body and the back. This piece here, and then this is the fringe and the welt. 
Now, this isn't, the, the fringe in the welt really isn't necessary. The fringe is not necessary. It's just decorative. And what you can do is, on the pattern here, and I have a ruler, is, you know, I can just kind of make a dotted line here to denote that you can totally cut off the fringe, but but leave the welt. The strip, this strip here would, would be the welt. So, fringe is optional. Okay, so two of this piece and one of this piece. So next, um, as you can see, I've got a, a, a this is a, a writing or a um, colored pencil or a pencil. Graphite is is best to be used on buckskin uh, when you can. And speaking of which, here's a ruler. This is just to make things easy cutting it up. But here's some remnants of uh, some buckskin that I have. I actually just took, uh, dismantled a pair of pants that I had and didn't fit anymore. Um, and so I'm just making use of it. I wish I could tan, uh, but I live in an apartment building now and I'm pretty sure that uh, the management's kind of strict. So I'm pretty sure they'd frown on me putting up a rack and tying up a hide, even though it'd probably be interesting to other people. So I won't be tanning for a minute, but this is what I have uh, to work with. So that's a buckskin. Um, and again, something to sew with, um, a bone awl, and bone needles would work all right now i'm using modern tools which is artificial sinew which is basically waxed nylon and uh an s or a glover's needle that um because buckskin is really thick and dense so it, it, this type of needle is very very sharp and goes through it really well and then i've cut out already um uh some buckskin cordage and i just made a I made a circle and cut in a spiral all the way around and then to, all the way down to the center until I couldn't make a uh, straight straight enough cut, and then just stretched out the uh, the that that strap or strip that I created, and that makes cordage. And then I've got a hole punch. Again, kind of optional, but nice to have. And as you can see, uh, a utility blade. And then um, let's see, where's my uh, and a pair of pair of scissors. And again, this makes things easy cutting out, cutting them out. And these these types of scissors cut through leather. So, uh, what we're, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and cut out this um, pattern, and then we'll lay, lay the pattern out on the buckskin, and then cut out the buckskin, and we'll put we'll put it together. Okay, I have my um, pattern pieces cut out, and I'm just going to put the letter two on here or the number two, letter two. Put the number two on here, uh, just to remember to cut out two of these. There's gonna be a front and a back. And then here is my my uh, T piece, which is the welt and the fringe. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna lay out my front and back on the buckskin itself. Now, the one thing about it, sometimes, you know, when, when these are, are, are tanned, you know, the, the smoking portion of tanning a hide can leave different patterns, you know, it's not always just one matte, um, consistent color, or there may be scars on it from scraping it or from when the animal was alive and things like that. Um, if you were concerned about those sorts of um, discrepancies or discolorizations discolorization, on your uh, bag, then you want to lay out um, your pattern on the front of the, the buckskin and the way that I tan this is I only tanned one side sometimes people tan both sides not excuse me not tan but smoked so only smoked one side um, so that I have a front a back which is lighter and a front and that helps me you know because I knew I was tanning these for clothing so um, it just makes it easier so I know which side I'm working on uh, let's see here so uh, I'm not thinking I'm not that concerned about that um, for the purposes of this project so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and work on the back here and I'm gonna just find where I can lay this out so I can get the most uh, make the most usage get the most uh, usage out of it without wasting the material because I have very little of it um, and I'm gonna take my pencil and trace out, out my, the outline of the pattern and because this is um, cardboard, it makes it really easy because the paper doesn't doesn't uh, crinkle on you. 
All right. So, and I'm just going to put, you know, F for front. And then I'm going to flip this over. And again, I want to, yeah, have as much area as I can to work with. So I'm going to make use of the top um, line here. So I just basically cut one strip. Okay. And then put B on here. So that there's a front and a back. And hopefully you can see that, I'm not quite sure, but um, you'll see it when I cut it out. Okay. So that's on this piece. I want to have the rest of this for, for another project. Um, so I've got um, a little bit more to work with for another project that I, I may be working on later. Um, so that's the front and the back laid out. And then now I'm choosing a, a lighter colored piece um, for variation and variety and also it's a little thinner. Um, and that's because it's going to have fringe on it and you want the fringe to not be stiff and stuck. So this will barely fit so what I'm going to have to do is stretch this out. And so you can take your pattern and you want to try to lay it out in such a way that you can get it to fit. Okay, buckskin does stretch, so I'm not that concerned about it um, stretching. So this is about this is about right. So yeah, I can hold this here. Right. And I'm gonna trace this out. So this is the uh, front piece here. And basically we want the want the fringe to lay like so and the welt the t the, the sides are going to go up and be a part of the welt here on either side like this so i want this to be the front so that means i want things to lay out in this fashion like so okay so what's gonna what's gonna happen here is um i'm gonna st start from the bottom in the middle and I'm going to be stitching up either side, okay? Or stitching up both sides, but from beginning on one side and then stitching up the other. As I'm stitching, okay, what I want to do is I want to lay my welt along side of, uh, along, along the side, like this. Okay? And then when I stitch the other end, I'm going to stitch up the, the other end or the other side now what about the fringe the fringe should hang loose yeah so I'm gonna take my time and make sure that I'm not sewing the fringe here so I'm gonna be moving this out of the way as I sew alright so I wanted to map that out before we begin so that um, so that there's little confusion so one more time I'm going to start from the bottom middle do a couple of stitches and then I wanna start to fold up my welt side and align it along the side of, of on the right here and then I'm going to go to the left here and stitch up the left side like that so things will it'll, this will start looking like that okay and then what we what I do then is take this the front side of the back and then sandwich it in between so that's what we're going to be doing and that's how we're going to sew it together.